Okay. What is up, my fellow nurse brewers? What's good? What are you guys doing? Well, happy Tuesday. Glad you're here. Today is actually Monday that I'm recording, and all the social media apps are talking about how the Panthers have parted ways with Coach Matt Rule, which I do believe I called a couple weeks ago. I was like, he ain't gonna last. They should just kept Ron Rivera. I do believe I made this prediction. Uh, and since we're talking about sports, it is the Major League Baseball playoffs as well, which I don't really follow, but just in case some of you guys do, here's a clip in honor of baseball. Be out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some penis and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back. It's time to root. root what, uh, what was that he said there? Buy me some penis and crack. Huh. Penis. Is that how the song goes? Penis. Well, I don't know. You guys are the baseball fans, not me. So I guess that's how it goes, huh? And uh, <laughs> while I was looking up that clip, if you don't know, that's, uh, what's his name? Somebody hung. Sam hung? Uh, let me see. Ah, William Hung. Yeah, William Hung. The dude from, like, the first season of American Idol that was, like, so terrible that he actually got a huge following because he sucked so bad. Back when that was a thing. He kind of led the charge with people getting famous for not being good. <laughs> but that's a clip from him, like, doing the opening Take Me Out to the Ball game. Yeah, a major league game, which is pretty funny. And you know, while I was looking that clip up, you know how, like, you'll get suggested other clips or other videos that you may like. So I was searching that video and I saw this other video that's like an educational video from the 80s. It says it's from 1984. And this is not a joke. This is an educational video that was made for kids. And since this is an educational podcast, I'm going to go ahead and play it. Penis is what boys have down in front. Penis is the word, though it seems blunt. All boys have a penis, so no matter what you've heard, remember that penis is the proper word. Vulva is what girls have down below. Okay, that's more than enough. That is more than enough. You guys feeling educated? Can I go ahead and just wrap this thing up? So yeah, drink your coffee before work. Drink your beer after and never do it the other way around. I'm out. <laughs> That'd be awesome. A three minute episode. Just like penis talk and then I, then I sign off. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So I'll, I'll quit being silly and we'll go ahead and get into our info for today. Last week I had a story that I did not share because I stumbled upon the 50 cent story. So I'll share that story today, but first we'll go ahead and do a healthcare latest tech topic. So let's go. Healthcare latest. Okay, today's article comes to us from the tech section of Business Insider. And here's the headline. A man borrowed $75,000 for leg lengthening surgery to make him three inches taller. So what's going on with that? Here's the article. The Limplast X Institute charges between $70,000 and $150,000 to make patients as much as six inches taller. So this man named John Lovedell borrowed $75,000 from the bank and he's basically going to be paying $1,200 a month in repayments for the next five years. So $1,200 a month for the next five years. He is in his mid-40s. And he said why he went through the painful months-long surgery is because, I noticed that taller people just seem to have it easier. The world seems to bend for them, he said. So he is 5'8", and his procedure is going to give him three extra inches. And you can insert your own joke there. Um, so yeah, he took out this loan, had the surgery, and the cost is seventy thousand to one hundred fifty thousand, depending on whether the patient wants to grow 
three, four, five, or six inches. So this guy is a network engineer, and yeah, he's going to spend 1200 a month for the next five years, and he says he has no regrets. No regrets! Uh, the, ma the magazine reported, uh, he said this, People just look at you differently when you're tall. I already got a lot more looks at the gym, Lovedale said. So it looks like he had the surgery, and now he's getting more looks at the gym. Uh, and it goes on, Cosmetic leg lengthening was originally intended to help patients with real conditions, but it is now becoming a more common cosmetic surgery. Like, there's people who have, like, one leg that's longer than the other, so they can have a leg lengthening procedure so that it would help their gait and they're not limping because one of their legs is longer. But essentially, people are like, well, why don't you just make both of my legs longer and I'll be taller? Um, and the article talks about how painful the process is, because the doctor literally breaks both of your femurs. <laughs> they just break your femurs, which are essentially like your thigh bones. And they, in they insert these adjustable metal nails. And what happens is like every day for three months, every day for three months, those nails are extended slightly, just a little bit every day with this like magnetic remote control. And I have a, a, a news clip from Inside Edition where they talk about it. And if you want to Google the clip, you can see this machine. It's pretty crazy. So yeah, they put this metal, break your femurs, put in these metal nails, and literally they just <laughs> separate a little bit each day. So you're in pain like every day for three months as these things slowly like inch apart and your body like heals and, and creates more bone. Then they inch apart, your body heals and creates more bone. And the doctor who's doing the surgery, they said, uh, this is kind of interesting, the doctor revealed that many of his patients are tech workers from big firms like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Meta. And it says, despite the stigma surrounding cosmetic surgery, it appears to become increasingly common for men. The Washington Post reported in January 2020 that men were turning to all kinds of cosmetic procedures in an effort to get ahead in their careers. So what do you guys think? Should I do this? I'm like 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, Say so break my legs and, and add, add a few inches. Go on, put a few inches on there, Doc. Go on, put a few inches on there, Doc. I want to dunk on people. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. So let me go ahead and play this video from Inside Edition. Guy, but has always wanted to be taller. Now he's getting his chance thanks to groundbreaking limb lengthening surgery. And we were there as he was rolled into the OR. This guy is making a special trip to Las Vegas with his wife. He's not hoping to strike it rich. He's here to get taller. If I can be taller, I want to be taller. Ryan Wade is 5 feet 7 inches tall. He's come to orthopedic surgeon Dr. Kevin Debbie Parshad for a groundbreaking limb lengthening procedure. After we've given you that additional height, you'd probably be sitting at very close to 5'11". Yeah. Okay. Okay. The procedure involves implanting a steel device into the upper bone on both legs. We use the remote control to slowly separate the bone. This is the remote control. The remote control signals the device to pull the bones apart one millimeter at a time. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. The body makes new bone to fill in the gap. So I push this button and then what happens? Once you push the button, then that's when you start growing. Awesome. The cost? A whopping $75,000. I've got another 70 years left on this planet and I want to enjoy it to the full extent. And this is something since I've been 14 that I've always wanted to do. $75,000 towards getting tall. I'm picking getting taller. He said $75,000 just to get taller? I'm picking getting taller. Which means he has $75,000 of somewhat expendable income. <laughs> and, you know, he is, they showed him in the video. He is a good looking guy and he's like, he has a wife. And I think he's 32, it said. And so like in the video, he's like standing next to his wife and like doing his hand. And she's probably a good three inches taller than he is. But it's funny. He's not like, you know, I got to do this so I can get a girl or whatever. Like, he's married. He just <laughs> wants to be taller. So, yeah. Um, I'm definitely going to follow his story and see if there's any documentation of the healing process, pain, any setbacks, you know, weird things like that. Um, and, you know, it is, it is kind of unfortunate that we're so visually obsessed in this country. Like, years and years and years ago, you know, MLK is like, it's the content of your character, not the color of your skin, not your orientation, not this, not that. But we're still, I guess with all this like social media, you know, Instagram, TikTok, 
it's we're still so visual and everyone wants to look a certain way everyone wants to look young not age wanting to look better that's fine wanting to do a body modification whatever tattoos piercings but it is kind of sad that the article did talk about men getting cosmetic surgery so that they can advance their careers in the business world like looking good still has a huge effect on your success which is interesting it's an interesting psychological thing and i've even seen studies where they talk about like in the courtroom people who are better looking get lighter sentences whereas like ugly fat people get like <laughs> they get the book thrown at them like now nah, we're gonna put you away just because you were ugly <laughs> not really I'll, I'll maybe look into that for the next episode because i hate just like quoting things that i haven't researched but i'm pretty sure I did see some research that was done that was like, people literally, if they're really good looking, they don't get sentenced as harshly when they go to court for various things. So yeah, uh, that's enough on that. We will go ahead and do one more. I won't jump into another segment because this next story is still kind of healthcare techie, like healthcare latest oriented. So we'll do this one more story and then I will go ahead and share the headline that I did not share last week. All right, so let's do that. Okay, this is a Mirror article that comes to us out of Western Australia. And here is our headline. World's largest study of decomposing bodies sees 70 corpses stuffed into suitcases. So what is that all about? 70 corpses stuffed into suitcases. Corpses. Headlines are good because you picture like human corpses. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, anybody want to tell me just what in the end time West Hell is going on here? What you mean? But here are the facts from the article when you start reading. So it said, or so it says, the grisly experiment in the Australian bushes is studying the effects of how bodies decompose and hopes to assist crime scene investigators in catching killers. The decomposing bodies of almost 70 stillborn piglets, so it's piglets, not people, were individually put into cases, as well as wheelie bins. (laughs) 70 stillborn piglets were put into suitcases and wheelie bins. And this is reportedly the world's largest experiment of its kind, according to researchers. So these pigs' bodies are left outside and exposed to the elements. And they've been used kind of like there's a control group and then a different group that's like not in suitcases, you know, different groups. Uh, And the hope, they say, is that by studying the effects of the decomposition process, it will assist crime scene investigators when reconstructing events and murder scenes. And it'll ultimately help them catch killers. So they're measuring how many temperatures and temperature changes and humidity and humidity changes are going on inside and outside of the cases and how those changes impact the dead animal bodies. Uh, It says microbiological and chemical changes to the bodies and bones are being looked at. The study is offering the first critical data to analyze bodies found in such environments and will give new information to add to the toolbox of the forensic entomologist. Which I do, I've I've seen various, you know, you watch those, you know, murder shows, murder mystery shows or whatever. And there are times where someone will put a body in a barrel or a bin or a suitcase and they're trying to figure out, well, when was this person murdered? When did they die? They're trying to check people's alibis seeing who was where when. So in order to figure out, you know, when someone died, if they've been in a suitcase or, a, you know, some container, you have to kind of look at how they would decompose if they're in this container versus just in the ground. So I have heard, I don't know if you guys have heard of the body farm, but there is a body farm that does this with actual bodies. So in this case, they're just using pigs. And, uh, you know, I can't go too long without being ridiculous, so... My question is, if you visit this research facility and all these pigs that are like left out in the sun inside these suitcases, is this what it sounds like? What do you think? Eh? Is that, uh, that making you hungry? Or is it just making you nauseous? (laughs) 
Ah, and since we're discussing bacon, uh, do you guys remember? <laughs> do you guys remember the clip where the uh, newscaster was talking about this pig? I think he had like his legs were amputated, so they did this. Uh, they built this, you know, these wheels, this machine for him to like ride around on. And the pig's name was Chris P. Bacon. So the newscaster's like covering the story. And he he reads the pig's name and he just like can't keep it together. It's a funny clip, so it's kind of relevant. So I'll go ahead and play it now. And then we'll hop out of this segment. Now to the story of a pig that is inspiring others. One pot, <laughs> one pot belly pig has certainly endured his share of problems. Chris P. Bacon was born without the use of his back. <laughs> My king. Yeah, you have to read this story. <laughs> we cannot. Oh my god. <laughs> that dude laughing always makes me laugh. Every time. So yeah, worth sharing. Definitely worth sharing. And like I said, we're going to get out of this segment and we'll do one more headline and then we'll wrap this thing up. Okay, so our headline for this week, which I was going to do last week, is brought to us by Newsweek. I just said week like 10 times. All right, so here's the headline. Woman hospitalized after dog defecated in her mouth. Seriously, <laughs> that's the headline. Woman hospitalized after dog defecated in her mouth. So you know I had to get into this. I saw this headline. I was like, yep, got to read it, got to share it. So, so here's the story. All right. This British woman reportedly spent three days in the hospital after her pet chihuahua defecated in her mouth. That's how the article starts. Amanda Gamo is this lady's name. And um, <laughs> she told Southwest News Service that she and the dog Bell were taking their daily nap when Belle suddenly experienced violent diarrhea. So her and her dog Belle are chilling, taking a nap. And Belle, the chihuahua, experiences violent diarrhea. And the article goes on. For whatever reason, Belle walked over to Gamo, who had fallen asleep with her mouth open and defecated on her. Gamo, Gamo promptly woke up and spent the next several hours hurling violently. A few days later, she was hospitalized with a gastrointestinal infection. And here's a quote from Gamo. It was disgusting. I was hurling violently for hours after. I just couldn't get the taste out of my mouth. I bet you couldn't. I was so dehydrated from being sick and having diarrhea that my kidneys had shriveled to half their size, she told the news. My discharge note said that I'd suffered a gastrointestinal infection caused by a dog defecating in my mouth, something doctors had never witnessed before. And uh, <laughs> this lady's final quote in the article is, is insane. This is her quote at the end of the article. She said, I've forgiven Belle for her little accident, and I still love her with all my heart, but I will definitely be more mindful of what position we sleep in in the future. So that's literally the story. This lady with this little chihuahua fell asleep, and the chihuahua took a shit in her mouth. That's the story. <laughs> like, when you read the article, it's really long, and they go into all detail, and, you know, her back and forths and all this stuff. But basically, she laid down, fell asleep with her mouth open, chihuahua dropped anchor in her mouth, she wakes up, and she's got, like, hurling fits of gagging and vomiting, and that goes on for hours, goes to the hospital, and she's got a gastrointestinal infection from literally having swallowed dog shit. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. Like, I know people love their dogs. I love animals. I have a cat. I love dogs, but they're just a lot of work, so I don't have a dog at this, at this time, but I do love dogs. But, like, I don't know, man. If a dog bites somebody... They put it down. 
to me, I'd rather be bit by a dog than be shit by a dog. Like, I'd rather be bit by a dog than literally have a dog drop anchor in my open mouth while I'm asleep. Because if that goes down your windpipe, you know, your trachea, like, you're, you're literally aspirating dog crap. And that could cause you some problems, man. That gets in your lungs, and now you have a lung infection. So she had a gastrointestinal infection. But imagine if it got in her lungs and she had, like, a, a lung infection. Now, imagine if she just couldn't breathe and she died from, like, aspirating or just, like, aspiration pneumonia. That would be one for the record books. Insane. I don't know. That just feels so malicious. Like, I feel like a dog could just have a moment and bite you. And all us cat owners know that your cat has a moment, like, several times a day and bites you. <laughs> but, like, you can take a dump anywhere. Anywhere. So what's up with literally going through the work of climbing, balancing, and holding, like, the squat position and literally taking a dump directly into someone's open mouth? There's some malice there. Something's up with that dog. That's like a Rosemary's baby dog. He does not like that lady. <laughs> and she talking about, they're going to be cool going forward. Nah, nah, he finna get you. Bell finna get you. <laughs> Bell finna get you. Oh my God. But anyway, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I could deal with that problem. Are you guys patient enough to just be like this lady or would there be repercussions? If it was me, man, I'll tell you what I would do. I'd do this. Adoken. Or this. Tiger uppercut. Or this. Or maybe this. Part of the Raging Lions Man. He's only 1,000 birds. And if anyone has a problem with it, they can come see me. And I'm going to do them like this. Protective 8 trigrams. 64 pounds. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why does that bring me so much joy? So ridiculous. Anyway, I don't believe in animal cruelty. You guys know that. But that dog would be getting rehomed. He would be getting rehomed. Because I cannot trust you if I can't fall asleep around you. <laughs> Alright. So that's it for me today. I'll go ahead and wrap it up with that. I already did the outro. So rather than play that again, I'll go ahead and just leave you guys with this. Penis. Is what boys have down in front. Penis is the word, though it seems blunt. All boys have a penis, so no matter what you've heard, remember that penis is the proper word. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Had to hit you with that one more time because it's epic. So yeah, thanks again, as always, for taking the time to kick it with me on a Tuesday. Glad you guys stopped in. And I look forward to talking to you next week. And until then, drink your coffee before work, drink your beer after, and never do it the other way around. All right, have a good week, you guys. Better than we, they think they better than us. Better than we, they think they better than us. Better fucking pee, cause we gon' go bananas. Even though we better than that, it's now we never. Better than we, they think they better than us. Yeah, yeah. People like them will never understand. Growing up rich, they had the upper hand. Boot licking pricks of badges in their hand. Motherfuck them, be taxing them for.